All right, what's going on everybody? Rob Satcham here from Feedback Ranch. I wanna talk about how do you get B2B or business to business clients? What's the best way to get new clients? You know, I do a lot of coaching here about the uh, how to build an outsourced accounting firm, bookkeeping firm or something like that. But this applies to if you do web design, SEO, if you do any, um, even insurance agents and whatnot, I wanna show you what it was that allowed me to build up a tax firm that had a ton of business clients. And I got a couple notes here, but basically what we're gonna do is I'm gonna show you the basic activities to get started so that you can find great clients that will be B2B rather than B2C. There's gonna be another video coming out talking about that. But the first thing is, is you gotta remember, especially if you're a bookkeeping um, company, accounting company, tax firm or something like that, you gotta get excited and passionate and fill your cup up when it comes to the meaningful work that you do. I truly think that doing B2B work is one of the most meaningful things you can do because short of helping be people become better fathers or mothers or helping their family life or helping them in leadership and pursue upward and forward mental health things, helping them impact their living is a tremendous honor. And I think B2B uh, services, B2B products, whatever that is, is they're better, pro <laughs> they're better profits they're more fun to sell and they're totally worth it. So here I am out in Elko New Market and I want to show you some tips that you can do when it comes to prospecting. But it all starts up with having a mindset that understands you need to prospect. You have to get in front of people and, and if you're not in proximity with people, if you're not having meetings with people, you're going to lose. So here's what your meeting um, system should look like. You should run some basic steps. Every great sales step looks a little bit like this. The first thing you have to do is try and get a connect appointment or a connection meeting. The idea here is it's maybe a 20 to one hour either phone call or in-person coffee or meeting at their office. And basically what you're trying to do is make a connection, hear about their business, see who they are. You're not trying to really analyze anything or it's not a sales uh, meeting at all. This is truly trying to connect with them, share who you are, what you're doing, what you're trying to accomplish. And if in that conversation, there's an opportunity to go to the next step, then great. Otherwise, it's also about sharing with other um, consultants or other businesses what you do so that they can help you in the future and you can help them in the future. It's about relationship building. And whenever you make a, connection, a connect meeting, that's critically important, but you have to have like one to four of those a day. Your goal should be that your week is filled up with three connect meetings a day so that you've got that funnel going. You're gonna have to ask 10 people to get one connect meeting and then from there you're going to have your connect meetings down to the next step. So the first one is a connect meeting. The second step is going to be an analysis, a deep dive. Now if you're a, a web designer, it's a deep dive of understanding their web footprint. If you're an SEO, it's an SEO audit. If you're a bookkeeping, accounting and tax firm, it's all about analyzing the, the tax return, looking at their bookkeeping and getting a picture of where is some low hanging fruit. How are some ways that you can add value? How can you actually impact this person's life or their business? Is there opportunity there? So the second step is an analysis. The third stage would be driving towards, well, here's what I found, here's the results. And in that result meeting, you wanna do a presentation of, you know, we've got two to five options that you could probably go with. If you decided to address these problems that we saw, or if you wanted to take care of this low hanging fruit, or if you're unhappy with your current solution, here's what we think we would be able to do for your business. And just be honest and frank about it. So the first thing is you got to be set up to prospect. The second thing is you have to run a meeting cycle. If you're in professional services, even if you're in a product um, type business, there's a lot of value to that too. So just make sure that you've got that dialed in that you want to run those steps. That makes prospecting easier. So the first thing that I know that you should look for is remember that there are other businesses out there when you're doing B2B or business to business sales that are also business to business sales. I know that one of the most critical people to get in front of or some of the best customers I've ever had are construction companies. Construction companies are generally speaking um, very busy. They have to sub out work in general anyways. You know, there's a general contract and then they have subs for everything. And so they're interconnected. They generally don't love sitting down and doing accounting. That's not their thing. They work hard throughout the day. They wanna outsource what they don't love and get that done for them. So I really like construction, um, the insurance agency and, and, and different things like that are important. So um, here, here's something real quick. Remember the stages, 
You want to build long-lasting relationships. So even if this doesn't turn into anything, make sure that you get their contact information, their email. Drop a text periodically. Use HubSpot as a free CRM if you want a system to be able to not drip on people, but genuinely connect with them. Don't use blast emails. I don't think those are very helpful unless you're doing them once a month and they're really value add. But here's here are the people that I would get meetings with no matter what. So find your local bankers. Go to your local bankers and say, hey, you know what? I help businesses. I'm a new accountant. I'm a new web firm. I'd love to connect with you, share with you what we do, and I'd love to understand how you work. You want to cultivate those relationships. Their trust is very hard to earn because they have multiple businesses they're going to help, but bankers are critically important because they usually are trying to find businesses that have large payrolls. Maybe they're um, construction companies that need a line of credit. Um, so what you'll find is that these really small businesses, they're great opportunities, but the, the you know, 10 to 30 employee type operation sometimes needs lines of credit, whether they're purchasing things, if they're in manufacturing, if they're in labor, whatever that is, so that um, a banker will be a great relationship builder, but they're really hard to crack because they take things pretty personal. You know, they have all sorts of um, privacy concerns. They're also, um, you know, they take themselves very seriously. A good business banker is a phenomenal resource. Um, there's a lot of nonsense ones out there too, but check those guys out. The second ones that I would approach, so first of all, if you're an accountant, these are good clients anyways, but you wanna be looking for 1099 income earners if you're a bookkeeper, accounting, or CPA, um, and an independent insurance agent, or an insurance agent that deals in business insurance. Those are some of the best relationships you can have, not just to take from, but to feed and understanding a little bit of the types of insurance that they're going to be providing to businesses can earn you an ability to make connections with people down the road and send them to this uh, independent insurance agent. So I would also make phone calls, Google business insurance and go to every local insurance agent around you and just say, hey, I'd love, love to buy you lunch, love to buy you coffee, that's worth it, okay? You may not have a lot of money, but buy coffee for people go to their office, get to know them, and do these connect meetings with them. Activity is important, keep your activity up, take notes, take them back, and put them in a free CRM like HubSpot. That's an amazing way to keep track of things. And then you can just periodically, you know, once a month, actually connect with them and do something. But independent insurance agents are super valuable. You'll see that there's some that only do personal lines and then some that get into businesses. And the ones that have been in business for a long time and help only businesses, you're gonna find that they are some of the most connected people out there. And generally speaking, they're gonna be um, you know, real estate um, investment because people who own apartments or multifamily or different businesses like that, they need um, certain insurances to protect them. Construction is like one of the biggest. They're gonna know every construction person out there. Um, so get in touch with them. They will allow, they're just a great relationship to have and they can be a great client for you. There's lots of them out there. They need new clients. So take a look at independent insurance agents in particular if you're looking for 1099 income earners because the big firms like State Farm and those guys, they're good, but they earn W-2 and bonus income. So for the CPA side, if you're looking to do the outsourced accountant thing, that's not best. But overall, if you're a web design person, if you're an SEO, even if you're an insurance agent, if you're or not insurance, an investment professional, if you're a CPA or anything like that, build relationships with independent insurance agents. Just call them and run a connect meeting. Now, the next tip that I have is that you should be connecting at BNI meetings. I don't even remember what BNI stands for, but BNI occurs across the nation, across the world, and basically once a week, no matter what, they meet and give each other, they build relationships, and it's all about building uh, business ownership or sales relationships, and then sharing business and becoming advocates for each other. So the way BNI works is you pay a fee and then you become part of the BNI group, and there's only one of each um, profession in each group, but they meet every single week. Now here's the catch. If you commit to being in there, you have to show up to every meet, every single meeting, every single week. That can be great. You should probably think of joining one because you'll get some great relationships. It's usually filled with very hungry, newer people looking for business just like yourself, which can be good, but it can be annoying because a lot of times they don't have the book of business that you hope. But I tell you what, you're allowed to visit a BNI twice and you can just show up 
and say, hey, I'm new to the area, I wanna get connected. And each one of them as part of the system are actually trying to do one-on-ones with everybody in order to get to know each other and also share referrals and share business. So you could go to each BNI in your region Um, Go there once, get all the business cards, have one-on-ones with each one, and you'd probably get between eight and 15 connect meetings, which I'm telling you, if you get three connect meetings a day into your schedule, you're going to grow your business so stinking fast you won't even know what's going on. And then you can keep relationships going ongoing. It's a great way. Follow them on Twitter and on Instagram and on Facebook. Support them. And there's all sorts of other hints that you can do here. But a BNI group is absolutely phenomenal for your own self. But then also you can go to each one and get to know every single person there. And I tell you what, that is super effective. Um, Another great company to be around for B2B sales is going to be your car wrap or your car. uh, Yeah, your car wrap companies, the people who put big logos on trucks and stuff like that. Only construction businesses and other businesses put those on their cars. They have amazing relationships with other businesses. Connect with them. They may not be the exact person that you are customer for you, but you'd be able to build a relationship with them. That, and they're usually very visual. You're going to see they share stuff. Any visual industry is going to be really good. So even the t-shirt companies, those can be kind of interesting, but mainly those logo wrap companies find the, the high protein ones in your area, cultivate a relationship with them, buy them coffee, buy them lunch, get out there. That brings me to my next thing. If you're looking for um, some connected people who have opportunity for all sorts of different things, real estate agents. Now, real estate agents, there's kind of the 80-20 rule. 80% of them don't make very much money, but the 20% do. So you gotta find the ones that do or want to or want to invest in their business rather than just be a part-time real estate agent. There are real estate agents that will waste your time. Stay away from them. However, you know what's really easy? I just went to Costco. I bought eight pizzas at $10 a piece and three things of drinks. I spent $120 and I got to do a little lunch and learn at their meeting. So call the broker and get permission from the broker, particularly at like a Keller Williams, a Remax Results, the Diner Realty, Berkshire Hathaway, whatever that actual brokerage is, and ask them if you can host a lunch and then find a way to do it inexpensive. You can do Little Caesars pizza, Costco pizza, Sam's Club pizza, something like that. Um, You do Jimmy John's, you're on the hook for like $14 $14 a person, but you could do that too. And you bring in lunch and all you do is say, hey, here's what I do, here's what we're all about. And that can help you get some great opportunity. I just came out of this with five opportunities. I think three of them are gonna be pretty promising and uh, it's totally worth it, $120 and I get five leads that I got to make a personal connection with and have a conversation with. That's important. Plus, now I can do digital marketing to those offices. So find the brokerages around you, find the leader that's there, ask permission to host a lunch and learn and do something like that. That's another thing that you could do if you wanted to. I saw places where you find a restaurant that you really like. I used to do this as an investment professional. It's kind of annoying and it can cost a lot if you're not careful about it, but you find the local diner, the local restaurant that you really like, and you do a little box that says, I'm gonna give away lunches, and all you're trying to do is do a lunch and learn. And people put in their phone number or whatever you could draw out once a month and <laughs> as often as you want. You could buy lunch for every single one of them. But you get their contact info, you buy them lunch, and you find out what they're about. You share what you're about. And in exchange for buying them lunch, you get to do a little commercial. So that can be a great, uh, a great way to build or get B2B businesses. Um, here's another great one. You're going to want to invest as a CPA or an accountant into the local payroll representatives. ADP and Paychex have high protein, high caliber, really good B2B salespeople that you want to build a relationship. If you're a CPA, accountant, and bookkeeper doing my outsourced accountant program, you're going to want to have a relationship with them no matter what um, because they can help you with their business. But I'm telling you, these folks, they are high protein. You have to be ready to uh, help them out probably a little bit, but they can be a phenomenal connection. They know every single business owner. They know every CPA and accounting firm and bookkeeping firm in your area. And all of those people are super connected. So making a connection with them, buying them lunch, getting to know them, understanding who they are, feeding them some business will chum the waters like a doggone shark and you will start getting referrals from them. You help them, they're gonna help you which can be kind of hard over time, especially when you have connections with both of them, but call the local paychecks and ADP payroll um, 
folks and get in contact with your regional salesperson and just tell them, hey, I'd like to, I'd like to do a lunch and learn or I'd like to um, do some co-marketing with you or whatever that looks like and start to understand their business and pay it forward to them. That can be very helpful. We had a ton of clients come from that. Uh, the next one would be investment advisors and real, uh, investment advisors, retirement planners, those types of people, um, those that have been around for a while, you know, in investment advising, you gotta get through the first three or four years and then once you're there, you're usually established. So if you can find investment advisors that have been around for a long time and you can find out what their perspectives are, you could be, especially if you find business focused one, if you find, um, I know Schwab, if you can find a Schwab advisor, they usually are helping businesses big time, but then there'll be some independent investment advisors that specialize in small business retirement plans. You should get to know them no matter what because they can help you implement 401k plans. You can help, um, when you get connected with them, they will help you understand the, the real logistics to doing like a profit share 401k plan or crafting a 401k plan that allows the officers to make Mm, let's see, it's almost like cheating, but basically to make bigger contributions to themselves than normal. Um, they can help you do all sorts of things. Some of them are in pensions, but do a Google search and start finding some of the business investment planners or 401k planners around you. In fact, you'll find that there's, you have the 401k or investment company. Then there's these intermediaries that help connect the, um, the things together. You wanna find them. I can't even remember what the word is right now as I'm firing off, but find investment advisors that specialize in helping businesses, 401k plans, SEP IRAs, um, things like that. Let's see, what else do we have? Um, construction guys. So you wanna get connected to construction guys and just buy them lunch and invest in them over time. Help them out. You can give them some free help, whatever business you're in, but the construction folks, they're high protein, but they are interconnected because there's a concrete guy, there's a framing, there's a drywaller, there's a painter, there's a roofer. They are all interconnected. They all work on jobs together. And if you can get cracked into like um, a remodeling company or any of these subcontractors, it can be a commercial tiler. Next thing you know, you get to meet a whole bunch of people that need help there. That's a great way to get connected. Investing in relationships is the point of all this. And uh, I, I'm telling you guys, you can get a ton of B2B business out of that. I would say that those are those are the main ways. If you want to grow, um, whether it's a you know web design, SEO, graphic design company, if you're looking to do any B2B sales, if you are doing this outsourced accountant model that I talk about so much, these are some tips on how you can genuinely get business sales today. And I hope that's helpful. Subscribe. We're going to be doing more videos like this. Have a wonderful day.